Hello to you all. So today then what we're going to do is we are going to expand on the knowledge that we gained from our last lesson um, and we're going to take things a little bit further with our current case study. So I'm just going to present my screen. Now the last lesson that we had we looked at the causes and we looked at the effects of extreme weather in the United Kingdom and the example that we were using was the example of flooding which occurred in the Somerset levels in 2014. Now we've been using mind maps an awful lot. Mind maps are really really useful for us to be able to recall knowledge and to be able to recall understanding so i gave you this mind map which gave us some ideas as to where the somerset levels are and what the somerset levels are like but we also looked at this mind map which gives us some clues as to what the causes were of this particular flooding event so before we start to go on to the responses let's just recap some of the stuff that we looked at in a previous lesson so the somerset levels are located in somerset which is in the southwest of the united kingdom remember the landscape is very very flat um, and it is predominantly arable so there's lots of not necessarily just arable but it is predominantly farmland that we've got around here however there has been a growth in the amount of settlements that we see so you know towns and villages around this area of the Somerset levels are starting to expand and starting to get bigger and as a consequence of that then there is more risk okay and there is more risk of flooding because there are more homes and there are more houses and there is more potential for people to fall foul to the flooding impacts now we started to look at the causes and we said that this was the wettest um, January and February since 1901 and 1901 was when records began when we kept keeping records of weather across the UK we had 300 millimeters of rainfall and that 300 mill that 300 millimeters of rainfall was combined with a storm surge which moved up the Bristol Channel into the rivers in and around the Somerset levels and that was compounded by the fact that the rivers themselves had not been dredged for 20 years uh, and remember when we talk about dredging we're talking about using diggers to be able to scoop up the sediment from the bottom of the river and if you can scoop up the sediment from the bottom of the river what you can do is you can increase the capacity of the river so you can increase the amount of water that it can actually hold so in terms of the story then we've got a little bit of information about the Somerset levels and where the Somerset levels are and we know what the causes are what we need to do is we need to recap the effects before looking at the responses now in our last lesson we focused on the effects and we talked about being able to draw out specific pieces of information so here's a couple of examples we said that over 600 houses were flooded 16 farms were evacuated it cost 10 million in terms of damage 14,000 hectares of agricultural land and 1,000 livestock evacuated. We had the Bristol to Taunton railway line closed at Bridgewater. So these are all specific pieces of information. Remember, anyone can go into an exam and can write that houses get flooded because of a flood. OK, what sets you apart from others is your ability to be able to give specific information based around your example. So that's going to be really critical for revision for when it comes to those exams. So this lesson then what we're going to focus on are the responses okay remember you have a cause the reason why it happens you have the effects the bad things predominantly but sometimes good things that come from it and then we get the response and the response is how you deal with it okay now in terms of target questions what i'm going to do is in our next lesson is i'm going to set you a series of questions which are going to collate your answers via google forms and it's going to use your knowledge and understanding from this lesson to do it your work for this lesson should be guided through the task which we're going to go through today and you should submit that in the normal way via Google Classroom. So what we're going to do to start off with is we're going to explain the difference between an immediate response and a secondary response. Some of you will know that already from when we've looked at the impacts of earthquakes and volcanoes and other hazards. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give specific information about the Somerset levels as an example of flooding. So the first things first. What we need to do is we need to look at the different types of response. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to a video clip and you're going to see a lady who is talking to um, the former chancellor um, of the Exchequer, a man named Philip Hammond. Um, and this lady is very angry and she's very angry about the responses that have been made by the government to this flooding. But what I want you to do is to listen to what she's saying, listen to what Philip Hammond, the politician, is saying. What sorts of things are they doing to be able to deal with the flooding in this case? Let's have a look. Across the... 
I'm sorry, I am going to get emotional. There are 100 people of this village currently working together, none of them agents, none of them, not one. There is not one environment agency officer here. They're in an office. They need to be here. They have no idea. We have been working for 48 hours, evacuating people, risking our own lives, going into waters that would be over my head. We have had fire and rescue 814 people. We have evacuated 100 houses. We need the army. We said that yesterday. You don't take us seriously. Gold Commando take us seriously. What will it take for you to understand we are seriously in need? Do I need to take you to down right down to the end where we need people? Do I need to do that? I am asking you, what do we need to do to tell you to make you understand that we need the army here? We had eight police officers here last night. Eight. What, what is it that you think needs we doing right need, now? We need men. We have to been do what? At, to do we what? need people to we, first of all, we need sandbags. We need sandbags. Okay. We have okay. had just let me finish. Okay. We had sandbags being delivered last night that were hijacked. Right. By the did, time well, let me answer here. that one because I spoke as I, as I said, I spoke to the gold commander not an hour ago, and he tells me that there's a combined police and military team collecting sandbags now to bring down here for distribution That's the first we've heard. to local That's people. The first we've heard. I, I thought they'd be here by now. I That's spoke to him at eight o'clock and he told me they were on their way. Right. So that's a job that the military and the police are doing together right now. Okay, uh, who's unloading well, them when they get here? How are they well, coordinating the, that? There is the, nobody nobody here coordinating those efforts apart from us and we are not being communicated with. Well, there will be a military team bringing them down. So, I mean, I can now feed that back to the Gold Commander. But, but you have just stated on national television that what is, but there, you, I think, I've got the resource. Wrong, I've got said, the resource. No, you have just said that Gold Command have said, there, correct me if I'm wrong, what I just heard, there is nothing that needs to be done here that there's they can no, do. There's no that, task immediately for the military no other than delivering the sandbags. Right. We have, I'll tell you what our team are doing, we have coordinated. We have road closures because we have eight police officers who can't manage it themselves. We are directing the police as to where they need to go, not the police, we're directing the police. We are directing the parking office of the Royal Borough where they need to go to manage traffic. We are telling them where they need to close the roads. We have got roaches at the end of every single road managing traffic in and out, telling them where they can and cannot go. Why the military not doing this? Why are the EA not doing this? These guys have not slept for four weeks. We are tired. We need people yeah, to replace course, I, know, I understand it, but of course you also do have that critical local knowledge. I mean, you understand the absolutely. situation on the ground so, but why in a are you way not that people coming in from outside I, won't. I, I but we can provide additional manpower. It's but too please, late. Please understand this. I can provide the manpower to the gold commanders, to the civil authorities who are in charge. Oh, what I can't do is just impose the military. No, the military are there to provide support. I absolutely hear where and we've you're got coming 16, from. We've got 1,600 soldiers and sailors on standby, ready to move as soon as they are needed. And they have been out you know, all we doing jobs, is building, building sandbag walls, building defences. All we wanted was half a dozen. It, it's, it's been known across the press for the last 48 hours who's been in control here. We have not had any communication. You are saying that the EA have got a gold command in, in, in control. I can tell you now, Dave Francis, Graham Sinclair, Colin Rayner and myself are coordinating over 100 volunteers. The EA have not spoken to us. We have not had gold command come down here. I suggest that gold command move from Tinker's Lane to Raysbury Primary School where they are most needed. They can see and they can act far more quickly. We don't need 1,600 troops. We need probably 50. Right. Why don't you and I go and have a chat with the gold commander now? And uh, Colin, bring Colin along as well. Great let's, go and, let's go and do that. Let's see do if that. we can get something practical sorted Perfect. out on the ground. Absolutely. All right? Thank you very much. Okay, right. So what you can hear there is a lady who's, who's angry, probably quite right in some respects, very tired, been trying to help people, been trying to support people. Um, but what you can hear there is a number of things in terms of responses. She's talking about the use of the army. She's talking about the environment agency. Now, if you don't know what the environment agency are, they're the agency that are responsible for all of the flood defences up and down the country, okay, including rivers, but also the coastlines as well. Um, they're talking about goal commands and they're talking about how they're coordinating the response. Um, there's mention of sandbags, there's mention of road closures and directing traffic and moving people, evacuating homes and evacuating houses. Now, what she's just described are a series of responses, which I would call the immediate responses. So those responses are the responses that occur within the days and weeks after a disaster strikes. Okay, And you can see that they're in the middle of a disaster. When you look at that video, uh, it's pretty obvious from the fact that Philip Hammond and that lady there that's coordinating that response are surrounded by flood water. Now, 
once we get through the immediate responses, we find ourselves looking at the longer term responses. Now, the longer term responses, the responses that often go on for years after a disaster. Now, in the case of a flood, usually this will be the ways that we can prevent the floods from happening again in the future. So what can we do in order to be able to mitigate it, in order to make sure that these events which you've just seen unfold there on that Sky News article are not things which are going to happen time and time again? OK, so immediate responses, the things that you do there and then, the days and the weeks after a disaster. The long term responses are the things that go on for years. And in the instance of a flood, they're the things that we can prevent things from happening in the future. So let's have a look at some of the immediate responses then. Here you can see a nice picture. Well, not a nice picture if you live in this area, but you can see a picture of this particular village on the Somerset levels. So essentially, as the floodwaters spread across the, the levels, homeowners coped the best they could. Villages were cut off and they used boats to go shopping or attend school. OK, that's an example of an immediate response. People having to use boats to go about their day to day business, to be able to go shopping and to be able to attend school. It's an immediate. It helps people there. And then what it doesn't do is prevent flooding in the long term. In addition to that, you've got local community groups and volunteers which were set up in order to be able to give some of that invaluable support. So what I'd like us to do now then is I would like us to get some notes down onto, onto our document, um, which is going to tell us about some of these immediate responses. Now, in order for you to be able to do that, what you're going to need to do um, is you're going to need to follow the mind map, which I've put up on my screen. OK, so this mind map here has got four symbols on it. And these four symbols are going to remind me of some of those immediate responses. And these immediate responses, by the way, are in addition to some of the responses that came up on that video clip. OK, so what we've got here is we've got boats. OK, and we've got people using boats in order to be able to get themselves into school and to be able to collect their shopping. So you can see that from the symbols that I've got up here on the board. I've used this symbol here of a raised hand. And that raised hand is kind of the asking for help. So that's the help from the community and the volunteers. So if I wanted to, I could construct a paragraph from this mind map I could say that in an immediate response to the flooding on the Somerset levels boats were needed and those boats were needed in order to be able to get children into school and to be able to provide vulnerable people with shopping that the community got together in order to be able to respond and to be able to help people within the short term okay so really, really simple immediate responses. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to click this timer. It's going to go for four minutes. In that four minutes, what I'd like you to do is to get some notes down as to what some of those immediate responses are to this particular example. Away you go.
okay then guys right that's sour means time is up okay so what we've got then the immediate response is covered let's see if we can have a look at some of the long-term responses remember these are the long-term responses designed to prevent this sort of thing from happening again in the future so what i've got here is managing the floods long-term responses so we've got 20 million pounds flood action plan which is set up by somerset council working with the environment agency to reduce the risk of future flooding um, so there some critical pieces of information we've got the cost 20 million we've got the organizations responsible for it somerset county council and the environment agency um, to reduce the risk of flooding now first thing that they did was in march 2014 eight kilometers of two rivers the rivers tone and parrot were dredged to increase the capacity of the river channel and there's a nice little diagram here which shows you how that dredging works so where we've got silt deposited on the riverbed okay when you get heavy rain it causes it to flood all you do is you get diggers and pumps in to be able to remove the silt from the bottom of the river and this increases the river's carrying capacity i remember when we looked at the causes some of these had not been dredged for around about 20 years in addition to that then we've got some other factors so you've got the road levels which were raised up um, in order to maintain communications and enable businesses to continue during future flood events so essentially rising up the levels of the road so that it doesn't destroy infrastructure you've got vulnerable communities which have been prioritized for flood defenses so that could be communities where there's lots of poverty or it could be communities that are at high risk of flooding or it could be communities where there are lots of elderly people for example um, the river banks were raised as well so by raising the river banks and straightening the rivers um, you can reduce the risk of flooding obviously if the banks at the side of the river are higher you can fit more water in the river um, and you've got pumping stations and pumping stations are designed to, to kind of pump the water around around the rivers but can also support in the event that there may be a flood um, in the longer term there are plans and they are still plans that have not been realized yet um, for um, something which is called a tidal barrage now a tidal barrage because remember one of the causes of this was um, a storm surge that was coming up the Bristol Channel is essentially a barrier which is designed to stop that tide from moving up the river. Um, one of the best examples is the Thames, uh, in the, the um, Thames Barrier, which is down in London in the River Thames. They want to build one a little bit like this one that you can see here in the picture at Bridgewater, which remember was where the railway lines and the railway links were destroyed. And that's something which has been considered for 2024. So what I've done is I've broken down these longer term responses using similar sorts of symbols. So if I go around this mind map, which I've got here, I know that it cost 20 million and it cost 20 million. And it was a partnership with the Environment Agency and Somerset County Council. I look at this symbol here. It's got a car with an up. That reminds me that the levels of the roads were increased and the levels of the roads were increased in order to be able to allow infrastructure and allow vehicles to still move along the river. Um, you've got here a nice little river and we've got an up arrow which signals the raising of the river banks. So the river banks are raised in order to contain more water. We've got tide here to remind us that they we're trying to build a tidal barrage. You've got another one here which has got some elderly people which means that they've prioritised um, support and help for vulnerable people. And then finally we've got this digger here which gives us some clues that they wanted to dredge the canal um, or sorry dredge the rivers at least eight kilometers of it so that you could fit more water and so that you could have a higher capacity so this time i'm going to give you a little bit longer i'm going to give you a time limit of six minutes okay if you need to pause and to rewind please do if not okay your time starts as soon as that clock starts counting down
Okay then, guys, right, time is up. Right, so at the moment then, what we've got then is we've got information, which is about both the immediate responses and the secondary responses, okay? Um, that's all that we need for today. Um, so submit your immediate and your secondary responses on the back of those two mind maps that you've just seen there. Um, next lesson, what we'll do is we'll look to see if we can consolidate some of these with some exam style questions, which will probably come out via Google Forms. In the meantime, if you really want to stretch yourself, do a little bit of independent research. Imagine you are a local council in Somerset, analyze research plans to construct a tidal barrage at Wedgwater, um, and you can find those plans on the internet. What would the scheme involve, and how would you reduce the flood risk? Okay, so pause this, have a little look at that stretch yourself extension task, um, and give it a go if you're feeling confident and you really want to go for it. Otherwise, um, we'll see you next lesson where we'll start to um, use some of this information and some of our exam seals to consolidate it.